Now that I am home and settled from G-Fest, I needed to do a recap and talk about my experience there a bit. And I have to say first that I almost did not go to G-Fest this year. And frankly, I if, if I were to go to G-Fest, I was planning on it being potentially my last G-Fest. And that has a lot to do with the fact that the last couple of weeks, we've been having a lot of conversation. Things have been pretty tense, right? With, you know, uh, many of us putting ourselves out there, calling out the hate and the fandom that we've been seeing, imposing solutions to fix it. There's been mostly positive response, but there's also been a loud few vocal people who've been like leaving some comments um, and, and being very confrontational, like leaving some problematic comments. And I kind of question, like, is it safe to go? Like, are you going to encounter, like, hate? But at the end of the day, G-Fest 2024 was quite possibly one of the best G-Fests I've had. I've been to this Godzilla convention about five to six times now, ranging all the way from back in 2007. And I did not expect the level of warm response that I received. And starting on, on Friday when I went, like, I was stopped dozens of times by people to not only talk about watching Growing Up with Godzilla and loving it, but to also comment on the videos that we've been making, having conversation about these important topics, you know, expressing gratitude over those. Uh, Kaiju Kim and I together multiple times got stopped as well. We spent most of Friday together and we were kind of bamboozled by the amount of times that we got stopped. But it it was very eye-opening for me because I did not really realize the extent that this went and the impact that it made. Nor did I realize the extent or impact of growing up with Godzilla. I don't really think that I truthfully fathomed that until the next morning, Saturday morning, we had the Kaiju Writers panel. Each of us introduced ourselves. I introduced myself and noted that I'm the host of Growing Up with Godzilla and people applauded over it. And part of my journey home, I literally cried over this because I, I did not expect this passion project that I do to really matter that extensively, but people seem to really enjoy it. And that is so validating for me as a queer Godzilla fan, a creator in the fandom who's really kind of struggled to find his niche. Like it meant so much to have a room full of 134 people, not only listening to each of us talk about writing, but to celebrate the things that we do, you know, and for us to help encourage other people and celebrate what they do, considering the amount of aspiring writers were in that room. It felt really great. It felt really great to be there to do that. And later on that day, um, I had the absolute honor of doing a comic book co-signing with Matt Frank. Um, and for a couple of hours, we had this super duper long line of, you know, friends and, and f fellow fans wanting, you know, stuff signed by us, uh, aspiring artists and writers having conversations about, you know, their work. And I, I had a number of queer Godzilla fans come up to me and talk about being LGBTQ plus and valuing my representation. <laughs> One person at the end of the, uh, Kaiju writers panel was like, we need more, I, well, how did, they, how did they say it? We need more queens like you, <laughs> which was so wholesome. I absolutely loved it, but man, it was, it was so surreal to me. It was so surreal to me. I got to, I got to convene with so many friends, Kaiju Kim, my Kaiju United crew. Um, I got to, I got to meet Quasi's, Quasi's. And uh, Quasi's family member, Samuel, who made this art piece for me, which is absolutely adorable and, and beautiful, too. A stunning piece. And Quasi's wrote me, like, this very thoughtful card and gave me a bunch of stickers. Aren't they wonderful? I did not expect to meet Quasi, so I was, like, very Twitter-pated to meet <laughs> to meet Quasi's who is such a phenomenal human being and um, 
I couldn't be more grateful to have had that experience. I got to meet Ryota, um, which was wonderful. I got to have a great conversation with Jeffrey Angles. I, I got to enjoy a Godzilla film at the Pickwick Theater for the first time ever. We got to see Godzilla Final Wars and being able to sit in a room with hundreds of Godzilla fans enjoying every moment of the film. It was just, it was phenomenal. So I enjoyed G-Fest. It was absolutely an enjoyable experience. I will say, kind of going back to what we talked about earlier, I'm glad that I made the decision to go because I think showing up is important, especially when you have people being very resistant. But at the same time, I think conventions like this and conversations like this that we have in these spaces matter because it shows people, especially, you know, people in marginalized communities within fandoms that they have representation, that they do have a space at the table always. And I don't regret any of the conversations that we've had over the past two weeks. I know it's made some people uncomfortable. I know it's ruffled some feathers. But at the end of the day, the people who need to see those things saw those saw those messages. And I know that they felt supported as a result. And retrospectively, even in my own place of vulnerability, going to G-Fest and experiencing how wonderful it was reminded me that I too belong and that what I do matters. And if there's any message that I can impart, it's that I hope that I can help make someone else feel that. The level of belonging and warmth and encouragement that I've felt as a result of this weekend I think is something that all Godzilla fans should feel. But anyway, and also, yes, this is a really cool Mothra blanket. <laughs> I spent way too much money on this, but I do not regret it. Anyway, share your thoughts in the comment section below. Thank you so much for listening. I will have a few other videos, um, especially some shenanigans with Kaiju Kim um, to post. So look forward to those. And I hope that you have a wonderful rest of your night.